in this session we would like to talk more about how the new technology in 10 years or so will have an impact on social and economic processes and uh, um, what will change uh, qualitatively in the way our society and economy functions. If you can elaborate on that, uh, how social interaction will change, how intellectual property rights will work differently, how privacy rules will develop, things like that. Please. Well, that's a very broad set of questions. It is. So, Sergey, first, is. first, thank you for, for hosting this. Thank you for inviting me here to the, to the World Forum. Um, and I was going to say that I was in St. Petersburg 17 years ago and just at the beginning of the Internet, and the changes that I have seen are so astounding over that period that you all are to be congratulated for what you have achieved to have built such an infrastructure, to have built such a vibrant um, economic structure around the internet here in Russia is something that you should be proud of and it's a great accomplishment for everybody in Russia. Um, now when I think about this, I think about what happens when everyone is connected by a, a wireless and wired broadband system. And I should add that the primary goal of government, in my view, is to promote the adoption of wireless and wired broadband. And then the citizens can take over. And the citizens using that infrastructure can go ahead and invest in education, entertainment, and so forth. Uh, this adoption of, of broadband, um, fast connections for every citizen, or as many as you can connect, um, is very pro-democracy. It's very pro-empowerment. It's very pro-citizens. It's very much a, an opportunity to create new jobs. It's very pro-exports. It's very pro-global. Um, there's a recent study, maybe in the last month, from McKinsey that indicated that from every one job that's lost in the Internet, 2.6 jobs is created. So whether you have a strong economy or a weak economy, whether you have a democracy or, or not such a good democracy, the fact of the matter is that the Internet makes everything better especially fast internet and broadband internet. So if you have such a broadband internet, and I will say that I think Russia is in a sweet spot. Uh, you have around 40, 45 percent penetration right now. If you look at European um, averages, uh, again, a modern European country, from my perspective, Russia, uh, should be at 70, 80 percent fairly quickly. So that means huge growth, huge growth in telecommunications, in new companies, new investments, and so forth. You've recently had a set of uh, significant IPOs, Yandex, Mail.ru, and so forth and so on. That's attracting capital and investment for the next generation of entrepreneurs who will build companies on top of this. So I think that sets the right, the right sort of foundation for a conversation about what can happen. What, what can you build on top of that? Uh, I think we should assume that 10 years from now, uh, in countries like Russia, but also in countries that are poorer than Russia, will have almost 100% of broad, well, broadband but that's, coverage. But that's a pretty amazing assumption. That's true. And, and that's like saying everyone will have roads and bridges and so forth and so on. And the good news about this technology is it's relatively inexpensive once yeah. built. And that the fiber optic infrastructure that's being laid now in Russia is an asset for the, cor for the country for the next 100 years. Right. Uh, so assuming that, uh, assuming that um, t information transmission uh, and actually data transmission uh, and uh, multimedia content transmission is becoming cheap uh, and available to uh, a few billion people, mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for things like, for example, intellectual property rights? Well, let's talk about some of the, some of the things that happen as a result. Um, let's assume that everyone has a, a fiber optic connection to their home. Uh, and you say, well, that would be hard to do. Well, in certain Asian countries, uh, it's largely now achieved. Japan, average speed seems to be about 100 megabits. Korea, about 160 megabits. So if you have more than 100 megabits for your home, the distinctions between television and radio and the Internet and all of the other sources just go away. Exactly. And so all of a sudden the video comes and you don't know whether it came over the internet or over another, another transport. And I think that's the model for the future. So in that, in that scenario, the traditional arbiters of distribution, the traditional networks and distributors are upended.
because all of a sudden it's possible for the content creators, the producers, the, the people who build movies and so forth to reach directly to consumers and charge whatever they want. Right? So all of a sudden that changes things. Mm -hmm. Similarly, a news, a news organization would want to show their news information everywhere, not just on their own channel. Right. So that's an example of a disruption which changes economics but ultimately benefits society because people can see everything they want. It's always available on their iPad or their, their tele television or what have you. But for the producer of the content, uh, what would be the viable business model. We've seen, we've seen a dramatic change in the music industry. I guess we are about to see the same happening to videos and also news organizations, as you may, mentioned. The, the producers of these content are developing new models. Um, from a Google perspective, we want to respect copyright. Mm -hmm. And so from our perspective, if you own the copyright and you build the product, you should decide how to sell it. Okay. Now, Choice one is that you could use advertisements, right? Right. And we are in the advertising business. That's obviously self-serving. But another way is that you could have a subscription. So if your content is good enough, maybe people will pay you on a monthly basis. They'll give you a credit card. We built a system to do precisely that called NewsPass. So copyrights will be respected, and people will come up with new ways of charging. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, the traditional charging models, there'll be more choices. Mm -hmm. And these are rough markets. You know, prices will fall. Uh, some people will make money. Some people will lose money. But ultimately, these are capitalist systems, and uh, the customer will win.